So a poorly written call to action can lead to customers or visitors on your website, on your blog, on your landing page to not convert, to be confused, and ultimately lose money, all right? And that is the opposite of what we want. So in this video, we're gonna be going over the top seven mistakes that people make with their call to actions that lead to a decrease in conversions, a decrease in sales. So we avoid all of those things, all right? So the first one is using vague language, all right? Using generic or unclear wording can really confuse the people that are on your website, all right? It can make it unclear on the action that they are to take, right? We need to be in our marketing as clear as, as possible. We need to hold our customers' hands. We need to hold the visitors' hands and show them where we want them to go. Show them how to avoid the pain or the problem that they're experiencing by purchasing our product and solving that pain or problem, all right? Number two is a lack of urgency. So without a lack of urgency, customers and visitors can delay action and not really follow through with what you want them to do, whether you want them to purchase something, whether you want them to opt into something, whether you want them to download something, whatever the case may be, if you are not giving them a strong reason to do that thing, then they are most likely not going to do it. Because let's be honest, like people are so distracted, people are hit with you know, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all these different reasons for not taking action, not only online, but uh, in their in their environment, right? Uh, friends, family, kids, whatever the case may be, people are always distracted. So we need to hammer in the urgency for them to take action right away, right now, all right? Number three uh, mistake to avoid is not emphasizing the benefits of the product or service that you're selling. This can make it less appealing. We want to focus on what they're gonna get out of it, not the features of what your product or service entails, right? Let's say I'm, I'm selling a software. I'm not gonna talk about, oh, well, this software is really, really fast. No, you need to tell them what problem this software is solving for them, how this, pro how this software makes their life easier, how this software will make them feel, how this software will get them to a place in life where they want to be, right? Number four is too many options, right? We don't want on our landing pages, on our website, on our blog, we don't want people to have too many options. This can lead to overwhelm, which can make it difficult for customers, for visitors to choose a next step, to take the next action that we want them to take. One of my biggest pet peeves uh, is having too many options. And this is specifically related to going out to restaurants. If there's one thing that I do not agree with, it's a restaurant with a huge menu, right? If you go to any diner, they have like, 30 pages of options. I get that they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but at the same time, it just leads for me, it leads me feeling overwhelmed and I just want one page of choices to take action, all right? I don't wanna be sitting there reading 30 pages for 30 minutes what I need to eat or what I should be eating, right? So let this be, uh, be aware of this when your visitors are visiting your website, when your customers are going to your website, this is the same feeling that they're feeling, overwhelmed, right? Number five is poor placement. So placing a call to action in an obscure or hard to find location can make it difficult for customers to take action. We want the placement of the call to action to be right in their face so they are very aware what they need to do, right? We don't want it hidden in, in the corner of the, the bottom right, right? We want them to know where to click. Number six is not testing. So failing to test different call to action options can really lead to missed opportunity, missed uh, growth, and missed money, right? We want to test. I know that testing is not the most fun part in marketing, but it can be one of the most eye-opening parts. You know, I, I think when testing things, it is so what I think works and then what I test and realizing some crazy idea that I tested will work what much better than something that I am just ingrained to believe will work. It's so funny to see how different 
uh, customers and visitors to your website act, right? We want to go based off of what their actions are doing. If they are saying this headline works or this call to action works better than this one that I thought of and I think is going to work better, then we have to go with the customer wants. We have to go with the visitors are telling us based on that feedback. All right, number seven uh, mistake that you want to avoid with your call to action is not tracking or using analytics, right? We want to track and understand, you know, what is effective. It's difficult to, to determine what is effective, what is an effective call to action uh, without tracking it, right? We need to make the necessary adjustments in our marketing to, to work, to make sure that we're not spending uh, money unnecessarily to not to know that we're not spending you know time and effort that is just going to lead to less sales lower conversion rates right so we need to track those things through analytics and know what's going to work and know the path going forward all right so i hope this video was helpful for you i hope it was insightful if you did like it you're going to like these two videos also so make sure to check them out make sure to leave a like make sure to subscribe leave a comment and i'll see you in the next video take care